Welcome to Q&A practice. Let's start with plane of attorney. Ready? Here we go. You may answer, I didn't see signs of impairment. Officer Sanchez never related signs of impairment to me. So at that point, we are under the impression she is not impaired. I understand about impressions, and I understand you're doing an accident investigation, but with regard to hardcore facts, with regard to Ms. Rios' impairment, if any, new question, with regard to Ms. Rios' impairment, if any, you really didn't know if she was impaired from a pharmaceutical or taking medications, correct? Lax Foundation calls for speculation, assumes facts. You may answer, can I just move on with another? Because I feel like we're going back and forth with the same answer and question because I will not put her impairment is not known. I'm not asking you to put that. I'm not talking about the document now. All I'm trying to say, I'm sorry, I'm not talking about the document now. I'm saying as a matter of being factually sound, you don't know as you sit here today, if Ms. Rios' impairment was in any way or if she was impaired in any way from taking medicines or, or anything like that, pain medicine or anything like that, correct? Calls for speculation, lacks foundation, assumes facts, you may answer. So we're trained to observe impairment. If we see impairment, we will note it. If we see no impairment, we note no impairment. Those are the only two things we can do. That's not my question, okay? Again, maybe, maybe I am misleading you with having the document in front of me. This is the question. With regard to Ms. Rios' impairment, if any, from medications, drugs, or anything else, anything like that, you don't know one way or the other if she was impaired. It's unknown to you, correct? Asked and answered, calls for speculation, lacks foundation, assumes facts. The only answer I can give you is I don't know what types of drugs or medications are in her body, but they were not exhibiting anything that I observed as an impairment. So that's the best answer I can give you. Okay, so I guess then what you're saying is you don't know if she was impaired by medications one way or the other. Would that be accurate? Misstates testimony. It doesn't really misstate anything. Go ahead and answer. Calls for speculation lacks foundation, assumes facts. I will say that I didn't see any any signs of impairment. Did you test her in any way, officer? No. For being impaired for drugs? No. Did you perform any tests on her? I didn't. Did you have anybody perform tests on her? I didn't. I'm telling you she was under the effects of some medication. Whether it was impaired or not, we'll leave it to an expert to decide that. But I'm letting you know that I talked with her 
and I'm not throwing anything in to argue. She's got a very good lawyer here. What I want to know from you today is, without having tested her for impairment from medication, okay, and a woman who you mentioned was upset, and without having anybody else test her for impairment for medications, would it be a fair and an accurate comment that you really, as you sit here today, don't know if she was impaired from any medications? Is that calls for speculation? You've got to let me finish. Would that be fair and accurate? Calls for speculation lacks foundation. No. No is the best answer I can give you. No, it's not fair and accurate. No. Did you know that she was impaired? Objection lacks foundation. You may answer. Assumes facts calls for speculation. It's un- no. If somebody else knew at that time, I'm only asking about you. Did you know if she was impaired? I don't. Do not believe she was impaired. I'm not asking for your belief right now. I may in a minute. But what I want to know is, as a matter of certainty, do you know if she was impaired by drugs or medications? Same objections, no. If we go on to page three, page three goes on. Evidently, what you did here, you documented that Sam Banks was transported by Russell's, correct? And were you present when they actually picked his body up? Yes. And you mentioned that when you got to the scene, I know you didn't know if he'd been moved or not. Did you see where he was at the scene of the accident? Yes, I saw where he was laying. Okay, can you can you describe for me as best you can? Was he in the intersection area? Yes. And if we if we Crestview runs generally east and west, is that right? Correct. There may be some kilt or two. But for today's purposes, we're going to consider Crestview going east and west and Spring Road kind of T intersects into Crestview, correct? Correct. You know what I mean by the term prolongation? Yes. Okay, if we wanted to, I want to find out where in the intersection you saw his body, how far to the west of the prolongation of the of the west line of Spring Road would his body have been. I would put his body as approximately two feet west of the west prolongation line of Spring Road. I'm sorry, two feet east of the west prolongation line. Okay, so he was actually, before you get into the intersection, he was, so it would be in the intersection, but not quite past the prolongation line, the west prolongation line of Spring Road. Okay, just for my notes, the west prolongation, these people were westbound, correct? Correct. And so what would, what you have is you have him to the east of the west prolongation, correct? 
about two feet east. About two feet to the east, correct. Okay, and do you know from the southern point of Crestview, by the way, there's a, there's a white, we have the photos, we'll mark in a second. Okay, there's a white fog line. Do you call that a fog line or edge line? What do you call? It's the painted white edge line, road edge, edge line. Do you know how far? As you recall, how far to the north of that white line his body was, if you remember, I would say approximately four feet south. It would be south of the north road edge. And that will conclude our Q&A practice.